Let's talk about the different types of organ rejection. This all depends on the uh, recipient's immune system and how quickly they recognize a re organ uh, as foreign or non-self. Hyperacute rejection, um, by its name, sounds very quick. It's not just acute, it's hyperacute. And this type of rejection would re occur within minutes of organ transplantation. Um, as, and as your textbook says, it might happen before the uh, patient leaves the operating room. They could already tell, oh no, the immune system is recognizing the or organ, uh, organ as foreign and attacking it. This usually only happens if uh, there has been some error in matching and clearing the organ transplantation between the donor and the recipient. So this is rare, but it does happen. Um, and usually it's because of some sort of error uh, in the analysis uh, matching the donor and the recipient. So let's talk about what that would look like. So let's say the donor um, is donating their kidney to a recipient, okay? And so here we have the donor organ, it's in brown, and inside the donor kidney, we've got the donor's blood vessels, right? There are some endothelial cells that make up the lining of the blood vessels. Now, the donor has something on the surface of their blood vessels, the proteins, such as MHE class one molecules, right? So encoded by the HLAs of the donor's genome. The other thing that you're going to find on the uh, surface of the endothelial cells are the ABO blood antigens. So these are the same glycolipids that are found on the surface of erythrocytes. They are also found on the surface of endothelial cells. So, Hyperacute rejection is going to occur if the recipient recognizes any of these molecules as non-self and has antibodies already made to them. So what would this look like? Well, let's say the recipient in this case is a type O blood and the donor is a type A blood. Now, thinking back to a previous video, uh, an individual who is type O, what kind of antibodies do they have in their bloodstream? Um, well, if you're type O, then your glycolipid looks um, sort of plain, and when you're infected by these uh, commensal uh, bacteria, you make antibodies to the type A and type B sugars found in the surface of the bacteria, which also correspond to the surface of um, our blood cells, and now we're learning um, endothelial cells. So an individual who has type O blood, as we talked about in a previous video, uh, has typically in their bloodstream anti-A and anti-B antibodies. And now there's been an error here. The donor is, is type A. So the donor uh, on the surface of their endothelial cells has type A um, blood antigen. This is not going to be good. So what's going to happen is when the blood supply of the recipient is hooked up to the donor's organ, here comes the donor's blood. And what's in the donor's blood? Antibodies, such as antibodies that bind the A type blood antigens. If they bind, they're going to trigger um, destruction of the organ. We'll see that shortly. So the other way that hyperacute uh, rejection occurs is, oh, oh, I should mention here, um, that when antibodies bind molecules on the surface of cells and trigger an immune response, um, we're typically talking a type two hypersensitivity reaction. The other mechanism of hyperacute reje rejection is if the individual, the recipient, already has pre-made anti-HLA antibodies that will bind the HLA molecules that are found on the surface of the donor organs. So we talked in a previous video how individuals could generate anti-HLA antibodies, and let's say the recipient had some of them, and they recognized um, molecules on the surface of the endothelial cells, these HLA molecules. So either way, whether or not uh, an, if an individual generates the anti-blood group antigen antibodies or anti-HLA antibodies, um, if we haven't typed these individuals correctly, then this donor, um, this donor's organ in the recipient's body will uh, trigger a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. And if you recall, we spoke about that in the previous video, this leads to complement activation, we have the classical pathway, the production of anaphylatoxins and in massive inflammation, as well as the membrane attack complex forming, destroying uh, the cells uh, in the or donor organ. So um, if this tissue typing uh, or wasn't cleared for antibodies, uh, or wasn't checked for the matching antibodies, which we'll see in the next video how that's done, 
then the donor organ will be destroyed by the antibodies that are in the recipient's blood supply. Again, this is called hyperacute rejection. So how is this prevented? One way is to uh, make sure that the recipient doesn't make any antibodies that bind molecules on the surface of the donor cells. And this can be done using something called a cross-test match. So let's see how a cross-test match works. So what we do is we take some of the donor cells and we want to check the recipient's uh, antibodies. Do they have any antibodies that bind molecules on the donor cells? So if you want to um, um, check for any matching of the uh, blood group antigens, for example, you would take the uh, patient's, uh, the donor's blood, and here we got type A blood from our last slide, uh, and as well as you can also check the Rh factor. If the recipient makes antibodies that bind these molecules, then we do not want donation of this donor's cells into this recipient. So if the recipient, will say, was type O, and maybe type O negative, and the, the donor was a positive, then the recipient would most likely make antibodies against the type A glycolipid, could also make antibodies against the Rh factor, and this would lead to um, complement activation. And again, you can do this in the lab because of what's in serum? Complement proteins. Complement proteins are found in the serum. So just mixing donors' red blood cells and recipient serum in a uh, test tube in a lab would lead to complement-mediated lysis of the donor cells. And this is via the membrane attack complex. Everything you need is in the serum. Um, so a cross-test match to check for um, blood group antigen antibodies in the recipient can be done using a cross-test match. Secondly, let's say we want to make sure that the donor and the recipient are histocompatible in terms of any antibodies that might bind MHC molecules on the donor cells. So this can be accomplished, again, using the, do the recipient's serum. Now we're going to use donor cells that have MHC molecules on their surface. So, for example, T cells, uh, and these are easily uh, uh, extracted from the donor's blood supply. So you can take some of the donor's blood, and if you look at their lymphocytes, specifically their T cells, T cells have MHC class 1 molecules on their surface. If this recipient makes anti-HLA antibodies that bind these HLAs, or MHC class 1s, then this is not a good match, right? Um, so we don't want antibodies from the recipient binding these MHC class 1 molecules. If they don't bind, awesome. If they do bind, that is not good. That's going to, uh, there's going to be a hyperacute rejection occurring. For uh, MHC class 2, um, we, again, uh, we use serum from the recipient. Maybe they have MHC class 2 or anti-HLA2 antibodies floating around in their serum that would bind uh, MHC2 molecules on the surface of donor cells. Again, you can easily um, extract uh, white blood cells from the donor's blood. Uh, and now we're looking at probably B cells because B cells have both MHC class 1 and class 2 expressed on their surface. So if a recipient has antibodies that bind these HLA2 uh, or MHC2 molecules, then that is also going to lead to rejection of the donor's organs. Um, so this is how uh, we ensure, a cross-test match, is we, we do this to ensure that the recipient doesn't have any antibodies that would recognize molecules on the surface of donor cells. If it does, then that would lead to hyperacute rejection. And in the lab, we can mix the serum from the recipient, the cells from the donor. If we get comp if we get uh, complement mediated lysis, we know this is not a good match. If we get no lysis, then we're good.